Alright, so here we are going to go through some of the basics of the programming component to the course. So first of all, what is programming? Just very, uh, we'll start off like you don't know anything and then we'll move from there. So programming is where the user can instruct the computer to perform a task. It is how the programs on your computer and phone are created. There's an example of some code on the right. So code is another uh, expression which it means the actual uh, information that you type into the computer, into the programming language, which there are many. And in this course, we're going to be looking at Python, although the exam is in something called pseudocode, so we'll look at that as well. And I'll sort of talk about the mix. But the examples in this uh, part here are in um, pseudocode. So we're just going to show you what happens. So first of all, we're going to look at the three fundamental programming elements okay and those are sequence selection and iteration it could be very likely in the exam that they'll show you some code and they will ask you which of the three is on display here sequence is always on display because that is a fundamental that you know, must exist but they don't always have selection or iteration and so they'll often have one of them and you've got to say oh line 14 line 18 was a, a selection or whatever so let's have a look at sequence Sequence just means it's the order in which instructions are going to be processed or executed. So that's what I mean by every program has sequence in it because they all have an order. And so therefore, in this program here, you'll see that it's going to go straight down. Okay, programs don't always go top to bottom because you can jump around using commands um, or go to sub programs using commands. But in this instance, there are none of those. So it does go line one, line two, line three, and it executes them in order. This is very important. So we're on to selection. Now this is a bit more interesting. A selection is where you can ask a question. Um, the main, nearly the only one you're ever going to use is an if command. And basically an if command is going to ask a question. Okay, so it's going to, it's going to evaluate this question here. And based on whether it responds as true or false, it depends on where the program will move. So here I've set x to be the value of 10. I then ask a question if x is more than 5. If it is, we're going to execute this line of code. Otherwise, else is another way of saying otherwise. So if this is not true, this uh, test, we're going to do this line of code. Well, of course, x 10 is more than 5. Um, and so it prints high and it doesn't do this line of code here. You'll notice that I've got the word then, else, and end if. You don't always have to have an else. We are uh, going to go through the if statement a bit more later, but just so you know, you don't always have to have an else. You could just put end if there, and then if it was, say, four, it wouldn't print by, it would just do nothing, which actually is often more common. Um, but anyway, so you'll notice as well, just as a structural thing, that I've tabbed this in. This is quite common. Um, in Python, the program language on the computer, it's imperative you tab it in. Um, because that's how it, you know, it needs to be tabbed in. But in the pseudocode, which is pseudocode, this which is um, just sort of more human code, um, you don't need to. But it's just good practice to keep everything tabbed in. If it's part of something like an if statement or an else of the if. So iteration is the other um, programming fundamental. And basically, that's just another way of saying looping. So essentially here, I've got some code that's going to um, loop five times from naught to four and we'll go through exactly how four loops work another time. I'm not going to explain them. I think I explained the last one too much. But all you've got to understand is that iteration is another way of saying looping. So you've got sequence, which says that the order of things happen in a specific way. You've got a selection and these selections aren't in every program. I mean, they will be in every real program. But like if you wrote just print hello, then you have I mean, that that line is not a selection. It's only this if that would be a selection. Okay, that's where your selection line is, the if. If you see the word if, it's got selection in it. And then iteration is looping. There are other loops other than a for loop, but um, a for loop is one of them. There are three main ones, for, do while, and repeat until. But um, we'll look at those later in, in more specific uh, parts of the program, uh, of the sessions. So we're now moving on to the other part of this first session, and that's gonna be variables. We actually saw a variable here and here, okay? 
But what a variable is, it's where we use it to store information in a program. And because it's the word variable, which, you know, variable by itself means, it actually means can change, like the word vary. So variables can change. They're not set in stone. You set them at the start of the program. You normally set them to a default value. So, you know, you start the game, the score is 10, ammo is 10. You might, you probably would set the name blank. Um, and this is a damage per second or whatever. I think I changed that to DPS in a minute because it's quite long. Um, but let's presume this is a game and this is the variables that you use. Well, obviously the score changes, the ammo changes. Name doesn't change while the game's playing, but as soon as you start a new person plays, the name changes. Damage per second could change based on the weapon you selected and is it paused, you know, or not. So that's what a variable is. It allows us to store some information at, at one time, like a current piece of information. They're very important for programming. Without them, you really couldn't do anything. Now, there are what's called data types. And so these are data types. When you store information in a computer, it needs to know what type of information it is because A, it affects how much memory it allocates for that piece of information, and B, it affects comparisons, and it affects like maths. When you do maths, there's different types of data, it does different things. So there are four main types, okay? One is an integer, which is a whole number. I think you use that number now in maths. So here, we're gonna presume that score can't be a decimal, it can't be 4.8, and ammo can't, you can't have three and a half bullets. So they're integers, so they can only be integers, right? They'll be zero and 10, uh, zero or any um, whole number. And they can be negatives. String is a word, okay? Or it, you know, you can actually have numbers in a string, like you can have any character that the keyboard allows you to type, but it will handle it differently if it's a string, okay? If you write it as, if you put name, if you put ammo equals and you put the quotes around here, you would no longer be able to do maths with that ammo because you can't do maths with words. So that's why you have to let the computer know which data type it is. So you'll notice here there are no quotes. If I were to put ammo equals double quote, 10 double quote, it would be very tricky to alter that with any maths. It would nearly be impossible. It's a really ir irritating thing you'd have to do. So words go with quotes in them like this around them. Um, just one quick thing, variable names, you can see they've got a name here that allows you to ref refer back to them. They can't have spaces in. You can have underscore, which is quite common, and you can't have, quite, in fact, quite a lot of the symbols are not allowed. I think actually it's only underscore. It depends on the programming language, um, but really people only ever use underscore and then normally use underscore to represent space. I don't. I just have, a, I capitalize the first word of every um, variable and then don't use underscores, but... It's really a um, personal preference. So you've then got a floating point number, float, and a real number. They, they're, they're both used to say uh, the same thing. And that's decimal. Now, I know you say, why don't they use decimal? Well, the reason they don't use decimal, a decimal number makes no sense because the number system we use is decimal. So that doesn't really make sense to say, oh, it's a decimal number because they're all decimal numbers because we use the decimal numbering system. So actually it makes a lot more sense to call them floating point or real numbers because um, even you know, in theory, zero is a decimal number. It's using the decimal numbering system as opposed to the binary numbering system. Um, decimal is another way of saying deanery. But um, so anyway, they use float or real to um, talk about decimal numbers. And Boolean is a special computing one where you can be true or false. Zero or one. Um, it can be quite useful for things like this. You know, is it pause, yes or no? I mean, you can just use zero or one, use an integer, but, but it takes up less space to use a Boolean and, you know, it, it, it is in essentially uh, what it's used for. Often it's used for like paused, you know, other things like that. So, as I said before, these can vary. So how do we change them then? Um, it's a basic programming uh, thing to learn. So we're gonna look here. Okay, so we'll do, they'll act differently. So I'm gonna go through integers and floating point of real numbers. Basically, numbers, right? Numbers work as expected. If you want to alter the score, you start off by writing score, you put the word equals, and then you put the word score again, and then you do the math you want to do to it, add 10. A lot of students just write score equals plus 10. What that will actually do is make score equal 10, because plus 10 is 10, like, as opposed to negative 10. Um, 
Now you don't realize that you've got, you always, if you want to change a variable, you start it with the name of it equals the name of it. And then you do the math afterwards. Because think about the logic of it. What you're trying to say is make the answer to this be stored in that box. So the score was five. Five plus 10 is 15 and store it in there. Right? Obviously our starts at zero, so zero plus 10 is 10 and then 10 gets stored in score. I changed damage per second to, to DPS because it was too long to write on here. So look, DPS equals DPS, and that is the symbol for times on a computer. It's, um, uh, they'll be on the sheet you're looking at, and uh, forward slash is divide, because obviously times is an X, and computers don't like reusing uh, X when it's a letter, and then suddenly it's a variable. Because you could have a variable called X, couldn't you? Like X is the X position of the player, and then you've got like, x x y would be x times y and that'd be really odd so what they use is star instead as times this is quite common i wouldn't even be surprised in the future it doesn't become times because computers are you know because integer comes from computing not maths that went from it used to be called whole numbers when i was young Integer wasn't a thing um anyway so dps that would double dps yeah dps equals dps times two okay so here's some examples of it running we set the score to zero, print it, so we get zero. Score equals score plus 10, we print it out and we get 10, because we've added 10 to it. So, you know, there we go. So that's numbers, right? Integer, real or float. What about strings? Okay, so with strings, and this is part of the problem as to why I say it's, in, it's important for the computer to know what things are, as in data types, because here we've got name equals Steve, in quotes, then we print the name, so we print Steve. Then we do name equals name plus Smith, and you see it's got Steve Smith there. Notice there's no space because we didn't add a space, so why would the computer think to do that? So when you add two strings together, it doesn't do maths, it would put them on the end of each other. So if I had a string version of the number 10, like age equals in quotes 10, and then I tried to like add five to it, it wouldn't go to 15, it would go one, zero, five, because when you add strings together, you put them on the end of each other. And so that's why it's really important for the computer to know what type of info you're putting in. And this is called the data type, okay? So we have integer and float data types for whole and um, decimal numbers, and then we've got strings for words, okay? Then obviously we've got Boolean, we said before. Oh, sorry, one other thing with strings, the only other math you can do to them is multiply. If you multiply them, it will just um, do for, you know whatever the number is of that you put in. So like here, I've got name equals Steve, name equals name times five, and it goes Steve, 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 Steve. Um, but yeah, so it does it five times. So that's the only math you can do. You can't divide, you can't take away. A lot of kids think they could do S-T-E-V-E -E minus E-V-E, -E, and it will give S-T, it won't. I know you think, why doesn't it do that? And maybe a clever one could, but I think it, it's, too much guesswork. What if you had two EVEs in there? Do you take both away? So I guess you take the last one, the first one, you know, where do you take the letters out of? So there are um, commands you can do to remove part of a string or words in a string. There's loads of commands to do that, but it's just not using the minus uh, um, operator. So the other one that you saw before is Boolean, and Boolean hasn't got anything clever you can do to it. Um, the only other one thing you can do actually, and I'll put that on, I wish I'd put it on there here is if you've got paused is equal to, let's go back, I'll just add this. If you've got paused is equal to false and you wanna flip it, so you wanna make it the opposite of what it is, which is quite common, you can just do this. I don't know why it's gone all small, there we go. What size is that? So you can just do paused equals not paused. And what that will do is not is going to give you the opposite. So not false like that is equal to true. So basically here, we've now set that to true. Now, now you're thinking, why didn't you write paused equals true? But the point is, if I'm pressing the P key, I want to flip it from paused to unpaused, paused to unpaused. So I could just do something like if key press P, paused equals opposite. So now I've just got one command that is gonna flip whether we're paused or not. If you press the P's key, if it's false, it'll equal true. If it's true, it'll equal false. That's the only clever thing you can do with Boolean, there, um, really. So Boolean normally you just set to true or false. You don't do any maths or anything to it. 
So now what you've got to do is complete your first worksheet that you've been given or page in the booklet depending on uh, which class you are and, uh, and then go on to the second session when you're finished.